Uh, I would like to say this, that this was a great day for Ohio State football uh, to come back to, uh, uh, I, I consider this partly my hometown, and, and uh, we have a lot of guys on this staff, Kerry Combs and Tim Hinton, Mickey Marotti, and then you got Dolphus Washington, Andrew Norwell. I believe uh, that's it. There might be a couple more, but uh, uh, to have almost 40,000 people show up for a scrimmage, to have the Reds Museum treat us the way they did, you know, there's so many things I wish we could do even more uh, when we come down here. You know, Coach Hayes actually started that uh, tradition back years ago when they would go visit a place to go play. He'd take them around and show them, and so they educate the players. And you love, we just don't have time to do that most of the time. But I just think that's a great concept, and, and it's been a great trip. We're going to take them to Montgomery Inn, the boathouse, and get a little taste of Cincinnati, uh, Skyline Chili, Graders, the whole deal. So it's going to be a great trip. Uh, about the game, uh, obviously it was a pass-heavy team, uh, pass-heavy game, uh, an area that we were not very good at last year that we have to get better. Uh, I thought at times uh, Braxton Miller and a couple of the wideouts, Philly Brown in particular, did very well, and that was a continuation of what started all spring. And and Philly Brown's turning into a, a legitimate All Big Ten uh, candidate wide receiver for us, which we need. Uh, our tight end is doing a lot of really good things. Uh, Jeff Hiram and Nick Vanette was had a concussion this week, so he couldn't play. But our two tight ends, I feel very good about. Devin Smith is another guy that at times he's just not consistent, and other times make great plays. You saw that last year. So I'm spending a lot of time talking about a part of our game that if we can figure that out, I would be disappointed if we're not the best offense in the Big Ten. Uh, the one glaring weakness is that fifth spoke of the offensive line. We have a a legitimate concern, and that is uh, who that player is. I feel good about four of the five starters, and unless we get that fixed, there goes the best offensive in the, uh, best offense in the Big Ten because you can't play with four linemen. So one of those young players have got to step up, and, and they have it this spring. Shown signs, uh, but the, once again, that's not. I didn't say show signs. I said to be the best offense in the Big Ten, you have to have five guys up front, which we had last year. Uh, on defense, uh, uh, just a couple names that Coach Fickle, Coach Withers gave me that I noticed as well, but I wanted their opinions before I came in to talk to you guys. Uh, Dolphus Washington has really risen, uh, has raised his level of play. He's a legitimate player. He's a starter at Ohio State. You saw him today and just have his way with our offense line at times. And, you know, he could be a very good player. C.J. Barnett is a guy that uh, had an up and down season last year. He's a very good leader. He's on our leadership group. He's a guy I'm counting on to have a tremendous year, but be, be a tremendous leader, and he, he did have a tremendous spring. Christian Bryant is a guy that uh, you take John Simon, uh, Sabino, and you take uh, the, the vocal leadership out of our defense, and who fills that void. CJ is certainly a guy because he's a very emotional player like John Wes, like Boren Wes, like Sabino Wes. And he's a guy that uh, has to pick up that, and, and he did. Curtis Grant's a starting middle linebacker at Ohio State. I think I announced that a week ago. We solidified that today. And he is a fully engaged player right now, which I take my hat off to him. He was not this that a year ago for whatever reason. And uh, the last guy is we were, were replacing one of the most improved players in the Big Ten, Travis Howard. And Durant Grant has been challenged. He accepted the challenge and a very good spring. So that's kind of where we're at, and I'll certainly answer any questions for you. Austin, go ahead. Urban, what's the difference in Austin as a passer from November until today? Uh, very good pass. If you see, fundamentally, he's pretty good when it's, you know, he just got it when it breaks down. Uh, that's when it starts to go. And I thought today, I thought it was pretty good. I, I didn't watch the video, obviously, but uh, he had a couple scrim you know, a couple situations where it didn't look very good. It went back to old, the old days. And the old days is start doing with us the ball and running instead of keeping your eyes downfield. Uh, but he's he's much improved. We have to improve everyone around him. You know, we got to we got to become legitimate at at, at, uh, at where we're at. And I think we have the the people and, and we have some guys coming in in June. But we have our work cut out for us. Yeah, but Braxton Braxton had a good spring. Yep. Noah Spence and Adolph Washington. Yeah. Thirty-eight or something. Yeah. Against <laughs> uh, two guys who are competing to be the right tackle. Are you more pleased that they were as dominant as they were, or more sure? I'm both, Bill. Bill, I'm, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm on a, that's going to cause me some nights to wonder what we're going to do with the right tackle spot. Um, they're both great kids. They're both talented enough to do the job, but they got, I saw what you saw. And I, I do, I am very pleased with Noah Spence and Adolphus Washington. Do you have to chase Ferris starting at right tackle? Is there anything you're ready No. No. Play. No, I didn't play Jack Mehor. Jack had got kicked in the leg the other day, and I thought, you know, here, why does he really need to go out and do this? 
Uh, our guards, I played them because, first of all, we had depth issues and I wanted to play this game. Uh, but our, our guards were not all Big Ten guards last year. You know, I thought Marcus Hall and Norwell, and they should be because they're tough, they're great kids. We just got to get them to fit better and get more bend in their lower back and some things, some technical things, but that's why I played them quite a bit. And then obviously our center's got a little, that foot sprain is not completely healed all the way back from November, so we're, we're being very cautious with him. Like, if you can be as good at tops from the Big Ten at offense, what's the front seven of defense? You talked a little bit about. Do you feel that's been yeah. solidified? Uh, I, I wouldn't say solidified. I, I'd like to hear you talk to our two coordinators, you know, Everett, whether it's in uh, Luke Fickle, but I know uh, what I see every day in practice, I'd have to say our front seven's uh, probably our most improved area. Like our offense line, remember last year the offense line was, you know, very poor to start this spring, you know, because they lost some good players from the year before. And they were just, uh, I'd, I'd say, our front seven on defense. You know, Curtis Grant's a real Mike linebacker now. He wasn't. You have a front four that's very active. And Tommy Schott that didn't play much. And he's, he's going to be right in the rotation, too. So Mike Vrabel has done a very good job with those guys. Rusty. Irving, could you just contrast a year ago the grasp that the offense had about the playbook and what it is now? Yeah, it's much different. You know, I wish it would have looked better you know, than it did today. But then you take, you know, I think there's five or six starters not playing today on offense. So, uh, but the one, the as far as grasping the offense, understanding the concepts, it's night and day. Tim. Urban, uh, back to the wide receiver situation, do you feel like Michael Thomas and Chris Fields are much more accountable now than they were this time a year ago? And just what is their rise giving you all? Chris, uh, Chris Fields has earned a, he's, I'm going to name him starter uh, today. I told him I would if he finished the spring. Chris Fields has earned a starting spot at the, on the offense, which is amazing. I mean, he's a wonderful guy that uh, last year was, uh, you know, just very inconsistent. But he's, uh, I know Tom Herman feels the same way. So he's earned a starting spot. Michael Thomas has not yet. He's one of those guys that just makes these great plays and then just makes mistakes. And that's just lack of uh, either focus or inconsistent, you know, just inconsistency, which great players don't have. Two more questions so we can get you with players. Dan. saw you get through Basil a number of attempts today, kicking, also punting as well. How do you feel about his progress, both kicking and punting at the end of the strike? Oh, good. Not great. Good. I think he should be the best. Uh, I can't comp I, I shouldn't say that, but I think I'm very happy with him as a field goal kicker. You know, I don't, I thought for sure, especially with that nice wind at his back, he would smoke those through there. But he, I think he finished with a 52 yarder, but, you know, after a few tries. Um, Punting, uh, I, I, I have some concerns. You know, he certainly can do it. I mean, when you watch him hit one, it's a beautiful thing, but he doesn't have that experience. So I'm very concerned at punter. And final question, Doug. Urban, you had an undefeated season last year. You missed all the bowl practice. With what you guys got done in these 15 practices this spring, are you on track for the team you want to be in the fall with what happened this I spring? think we're on track. Uh, this summer, I, I, I think we're halfway caught up. And so they have to catch up, and that's what that whole chase principle is. So we were 15 down, and you can whine about it, complain about it, and blame people, I guess. But we don't do that. We said, let's just go forward and catch up somehow. And that's what that whole area. So we got. I think we're halfway home. If we can pick up those eight practices between now and our first game, then I think we'll be fine. So we're still behind, but we're on track. Thank you.